What's up? It's Snail. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. And today we're going to be talking about Funeral Doom because Phantom Slaughter from Worm is the fucking man. Sent over the cassette version of Gloom Lord. Hail Schnell, looking forward to hear more Accursed Womb. Send a tape over when you can. Phantom Slaughter. Fuck yeah, brother. And the worm cassette version of Gloom Lord is amazing looking and sounds great. But we're going to be blasting... Fuck. Disembowelment Morning September demo. So fucking sick. Like, we're going to be going over a little bit more disembowelment in a minute. But first... Let's look at the LP of Worm Gloom Lord along with Evocation of the Black Marsh. Now, Evocation of the Black Marsh is a little bit more just Goat Lord worship than anything, but it still has that gloomy fucking vibe to it, and it's sick. But when it comes to Funeral Doom, I really feel like it's kind of in the eye of the beholder sometimes, but I'm going to be going over what I feel are kind of essential Funeral Doom records, and Gloom Lord is 120% one of those, and the fact that this came out in 2020 boggles my fucking mind. If you're a fan of Gourmet, Disembowelment, they're gothin, you're gonna fucking love this, along with a little bit of Goat Lord carrying over from the first release. Fuck yeah to Equal Man of Thorn and Phantom Slaughter. Awesome fucking dudes, seriously. Flardidian Funeral Doom. And I was going to go over a couple cassettes, but I just chose one. And again, this is a 2020 release that just has completely blown me away, and I'm a fucking obsessed with it. Atramantius, Stiglin, or Stiglin, you know I suck at that fucking shit. But when you have members of Cathelus using those awesome Predator Demi-Liches, <laughs> Demi-Liches, demi lich ish vocals with some of the heaviest funeral doom written like wow this is something very very special i kind of wish it had the lp artwork but i'm happy with this as well like it still has the same fucking songs on it i want to get the lp one day but for now this cassette hasn't left my fucking cassette deck. Like, I took it out just to show it right now, and it's probably gonna actually get replaced with Gloom Lord for a little bit, because the cassette sounds fucking wonderful, seriously. But this is a concept record, and it's pretty much like a great example of what Funeral Doom is all about, and that is isolation and just being alone and not having a way out. Like, it's a story about a knight that gets a sword from God that grants him eternity, but he slowly watches everyone he's ever loved die and get frozen over to where he is just left to wander a frozen wasteland for all eternity. That sounds fucking cool, right? Because it is. Atramantius is going to be battling Worm Gloom Lord one of these days on the channel. But today, I just want to go over, in my opinion, what some e fucking essential Funeral Doom records are. And some, they aren't straight up Funeral Doom, they're Death Doom, but like those elements of atmosphere and gloominess are what make the difference, like, and it means a lot. Like, the Road Burn edition of Disembowelment, Transcendence into the Peripheral. Yes, I did not have to fuck with Relapse to get the reissue, and I am grateful for it. But, I missed out on the Dusk EP on vinyl, as well as, like, the demo shit. 
But I do have the morning September morning September demo on cassette, thanks to Tyson. But I would love to have everything. But I just, you know, I, I have my problems with relapse. If you watch this channel, and I'm not gonna get into it. But where's my suffocation record? But anyways, yeah. Australian Funeral Doom. This was one of the first real Funeral Doom releases I ever heard. I had just got done smoking opium. I just had started smoking weed. I didn't even know the difference. Like, somebody else packed this, like, steamroller. And, yeah, show was over. Like, I couldn't feel my legs. And my buddy... He was working on a relapse at the time, and they found a bunch of the cassettes. Like, the original cassettes. And uh, he was like, yo, do you want to hear the scariest record ever? And I was like, of course. And that was my introduction to Funeral Doom. I was, like, barely 19 years old, and I was like, holy shit. Like, this dude sounds like a fucking monster, and, like... Where'd that blast beat come from? And then it just... Oh my god. It just really, really had a massive impact on me. To where... I started digging a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole. And... I happened to find this bad boy. And it's something I legit never thought I would own. But... I happen to be friends with Damien Fenton. And he happened to play in Otis Sank. And this is their split with Coffins. Wow. 2005, I think this came out. And it just absolutely... As soon as I heard the Coffin side of things and then the Otis Sank track, Narcotic Hughes, I was... I, it, I was a changed man, like seriously, and rest in peace Steve Mully, this is such a, like, that's in blood, Funeral Doom is something, it's not, like, if you're like, well, Coffins are just Death Doom, Coffins used to play so fucking slow and were so goddamn good. This is from 2005, so this is around Mortuary and Darkness. This is Coffins at their prime. And Otis thing, it just gets even fucking better. Because we have the Four Burial Split, another Parasitic Records gem that Damien Fenton sent over. Like, thank you Damien so much, like... There's a lot of people besides me that still care about this style of music, and they still care about Otis Stank, and this split has Otis Stank, Loss, Orthodox, and fucking Mournful Congregation. Because I was going to grab the June Frost, but I just figured I would nail it right here, because there's four of the heaviest bands ever right here. When it comes to just doom and gloom in general. 180 gram vinyl as well. Parasitic was not fucking around here. Heavy as fuck. Four burials. Split on Parasitic Records. If you can get your hands on this. Or the fucking Coffins Otostank split. These two releases are... 100% essential if you're a fan of Funeral Doom or just all things fucking heavy. Next up, I had to throw this in there because it's just such a killer fucking release. Necrotic Doom by The Spectral Voice. Like, come on. I couldn't skip out on Hard Phantasm. What a badass fucking EP right here by The Boys. And Spectral Voice is pretty much Blood Incantation minus Isaac. You get Black Curses Eli on vocals and drums. Art by Manifester. And just one of those releases that reminds you to stay deaf. Now, I was going to grab Eroded Corridors of Unbeing, but... 
there's just something about Necrotic Doom that it never gets fucking old. It's such a slab of awesome. On Dark Descent Records, I'm trying to get the fucking lurking gloom skull in there. There he is, chilling. I, I love that etching so fucking much. Like, it's so sick. And. Again, you could say, well, it's cavernous death metal. Well, maybe to you, but to me, I hear all the funeral aspects of it. And yes, it is death doom, but still, like I said, I'm basing this off of atmosphere and influence. And as much as there's that early abhorrence influence, there's also their gothin, disembowelment, Kind of your usual suspects. And Paul is a massive Mournful Congregation fan. Just look at his fucking leather... Well, I think it's a pleather jacket, but still. It's fucking badass. Like, next time you see them live, if it's during the winter, just ask Paul to see his his jacket. Because he... It's awesome. Like, somebody actually, like, hand-drew the logo... I never actually asked if he did it himself, but let's talk about Winter in the Darkness. This is the, the original LP on Nuclear Blast Europe. I love this fucking album, and I did not get the Gordon record. I really need to. But it's expensive as fuck, and I don't have a pot to piss in. And Winter formed in late 1988 and are based in the New York City, Long Island area. Together, they draw from varied musical influences and backgrounds to create what is winter. The winter way is clear, bonding music and lyrics to set a mood and convey their feelings towards this tumultuous error which we all will live. There are echoes of reality taking the negative aspects of a problem to generate a positive reaction. The enraged voice of the apocalypse. A soundtrack set to the onslaught of a dark, cold, brutal world. And that's what Funeral Doom is all about. Right there in Winter's mission statement. In the Darkness by Winter. I really wish I had that Gordon release, but I do not. Maybe one day, folks. But next up, I'm just gonna read the hype sticker first, but hailing from Finland. Excisions of Doom, Fold Sky Pulses, Worship Arcane Handle, Eternal. Demon! Yes, I am talking about Finland's Swallowed. Now again, you can call it Death Doom, call it whatever you want. I call it one of the fucking sickest recordings ever. These two gentlemen right here, wow. Fucking wow. And I actually have a misprint on... I have two side C's and D's, and I'm sorry, no, you cannot have one, but here is the actual etching on the D side. Let me make sure I'm holding this correctly. So there's the actual etching on the D side. It's fucking awesome. Wasn't sure if I was holding it right. Look at that thing. It's fucking awesome. But... Check out the misprint. Somebody like... It must have been for like some emo band or something. Because it just reminds me of... I, like, the first thing that popped in my mind, honestly, was Saves the Day. <laughs> like, I just was thinking... Yeah. Misprint. Swallowed, side C and D. And check it out. It's very emo-y. It's like a gas station. <laughs> yeah. Or it's like a crust punk band. I, I, I don't know, but I'm gonna go with like emo. 
but I just always thought that was so cool. But like when you actually look at the lyrics and like the little art book that it comes with, you understand you're holding sheer darkness in your hands and it's amazing stuff. I fucking love this recording. Everything about it is just fucking great. And check out the lyrics. I'm pretty sure the guy that does all like Titan Bloods art did the art here, but I forget off the top of my head and I'm doing my best folks, but I still have quite a few records to get through. So we're gonna take a quick commercial break and be right back. Alright, we're back with part two, and we're gonna be blasting Worm Gloom Lord, Head Split Records cassette version. Oh, yeah. So fucking good. Equal Man Thorn and Phantom Slaughter fucking killed it here. So goddamn good. I love this album so fucking much. And I also love. They're Gotham, and if you're a fan of Funeral Doom, then you understand how important this demo is, and you definitely understand the importance of Stream from the Heavens. This is the fucking Paniac Records hand-numbered version for the Suicidal Doom series part V111. <laughs> I think it's eight. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. But there's an amazing write-up about this recording and whatnot. The stars are right again. About a decade after its initial release on CD, we see Stream from the Heavens being released as vinyl LP. Their Gothen originally planned the album to be released on vinyl. The order of the songs and other details were designed to serve the idea of the whole to be split in two opposite inward spirals. However, due to several reasons significant at the time, we finally choose chose the CD format instead. But uh I'm astonished to witness the that the music of their Gothen hasn't lost its power in the sandstorm of time. It still brings back vivid memories, visions, and experiences from those times and places, as well as places out of time. The sound is a time machine indeed, and a powerful magical tool to invoke and evoke experiences from those times. Ideas and emotions that have grown and matured to more or less independent thought forms. We owe thanks to Paniac for releasing this LP and respect to all those who have kept their Gothen dead but dreaming after all these years. The great old ones still live in our dreams. Fuck yeah. Very Lovecraftian stuff here. And that's another thing about Funeral Doom. Sometimes, you know, a lot of Lovecraft stories are about isolation and whatnot. But, you know, this gets really, really gnarly with tracks like Who Rides the Astral Wings? Yet the Watcher's Guard? The Unknown Kadath in the Cold Waste? Like, if you know a little bit of Lovecraft, you know about Kadath and stuff. It's fucking sick. Even though Lovecraft was a fucking piece of shit, he wrote some cool fucking fiction, but not my favorite human being. But the demo, it's hard to even fucking say because it's in an alien language, technically, because it's uh, like some Lovecraftian shit. And that is Fantang Yog Sagoth. And again, Yog Sagoth definitely should ring a bell to all you fucking fans of H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu 
mythos, however you want to say it, because there is no proper way to say it, because it's an alien fucking language. But I love this promo photo. I just love its simplicity. It's fucking sick. And on the demo, you have Elemental Evoking, which I'm going to get to. Don't, don't worry. Get the Watcher's Guard and the Twilight Fade. And you have to thank the fucking Crypt and Dark Symphonies for this bad boy. And oddly, look at this colored vinyl. I mean, it, it's fucking sick looking, but like for a record like this, it's kind of weird. But it, it's cool in my opinion because I love their Gotham and being able to have both of these releases again, it just means a lot to me and this is one of the reasons I started collecting music again. I wanted to physically have like these records so I can, you know, forever look at the artwork and shit and just listen to forever. And like I said, Evoking Quietus. I was going to grab their newest, but I really love Quietus so fucking much. And this was originally uh, 2001 on Peaceville Records. And it's just fucking, oh man. The D side on here has this instrumental track from 2004 that Peaceville threw on here and oh my goodness that's kind of worth getting this alone and right now I'm a very very big fan of the Evoken lineup like honestly I think it's fucking amazing and all music here by Evoken 1996 to 2000 and the art here is by Steve O'Malley from Sun and Burning Witch. I think Steve was in Burning Witch. Yeah, Greg was in Goat Snake. Burning Witch is another one of those bands, like, fuck yeah, like alongside Asander. Like, I don't have a clarion call by Asander, but if I did, trust me, we would be discussing it. And same with the full length from Decomposed. As the Funeral Obsession it's awesome, but it's definitely a lot more death metal than the full length. And the full length's fucking great, but, like, as soon as you hear, like, At Rest and Spawn of Maternal Cadaver, it's like, fuck yeah, this is sick. And considering it came out in 1992, it's like, fuck yeah. And I like how it has Hey Zeus and the Vault BMX, because... Hey MSUO is above a BMX shop, just in case you didn't know that. And I love this fucking artwork. It's just, and especially the Decompose logo. Like, on the full length, they just used, like, kind of, it's cursive looking. It's really cool, but it's not as cool as the Funeral Obsessions logo, which is hand-drawn and just super fucking sick. And it's just one of those releases, again, like, it, it's so worth your fucking time. If you're a fan of all things doom and gloom, you gotta get into some fucking decompose, especially the full length. And then we have, from Sweden, I have the cassette version as well with the notes by Chris Dick, but... The LP of The Ending Quest by Gourmet. This right here had a very, very big influence on Worm Gloom Lord. As well as like Disembowelment, Goat Lord, etc. Gourmet, The Ending Quest, it's one of those releases. You can call it straight up death metal, but it's so fucking atmospheric. Full of gloom and just... Yeah, if you haven't heard this yet, then you're missing out. This is an extreme metal gem right here. Cassette is available, well, reissued on Repulsive Echo, who did such an amazing job. Like, the cosmetics are great. My only complaint about the LP is you don't get the notes by Chris Dick or the lyrical content. So, 
you're kind of missing a big part of this amazing record right here. But if you have the cassette, you have that information. And when it comes to just, in my opinion, like just atmosphere and death metal, it doesn't get much fucking sicker than Gourmet. The ending quest. So good. And for all you new to the genre, you might be most familiar when it comes to Funeral Doom with this release right here. Bell Witch Mirror Reaper. And I can understand why. This is one of those records that it's... The subject matter is absolutely devastatingly upsetting and it's a great send-off and just everything about this is fucking glorious like the artwork just look at this thing wow and now you might be like bell witch is boring live well most funeral doom is not gonna fucking cause a massive mosh pit so you got to go into it knowing these types of things and it's such a bummer like man even just like rest in power rust in peace adrian like man like there's the words of the dead by Adrian on here, man, that shit hits you hard. Like, if you've ever lost a friend, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And even though I didn't know the man, like, Bell Witch's music, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of, like, Four Phantoms and stuff. So when this came out and I found out about the subject matter and whatnot, it, you know... At the time, I had a friend pass away, and it just came into my life at the right time. And it's not one of my favorite releases, especially on vinyl, having to get up and switch. Like, this is just one song and over an hour of music, but when you get up and change it, you're kind of taken out of the atmosphere and stuff and that's my only complaint about mirror reaper on vinyl i don't know if the cassette version plays like the whole entire album on one side i don't i don't think it can but still it's not as bad as getting up four times to flip even though i know that's not a big deal but it kind of is with a record like this but lastly I love this album. Tyranny, Aeons of Tectonic Interment. Wow. Probably one of the most underrated Dark Descent Records releases in their entire fucking history. Seriously, this is one of the heaviest records Dark Descent ever put out. Tyranny. Aeons in Tectonic Interment. <laughs> Interment, I'm sorry. And it's just amazing stuff as well. Like, I love the art on the fucking LP. I just think it's so fucking sick. And this is absolutely devastating stuff. I'm pretty sure Tyranny also hail from Finland. I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head, so I feel like an idiot. But, yeah, fucking awesome stuff right here in my hands. Tyranny, don't fuck around. I really wish they would play a show in America. But, like, look at the... Like, just the art on the actual, like, LPs are fucking just gorgeous stuff. And... To me, when it comes to Funeral Doom, these releases, they just never get old. And they never will get old. And that's what's so great about them. And it's a genre that's not for everyone, but those of you that want to dive in head first, 
any one of these releases is a good starting point. Some are a little more extreme than others. Like, sometimes you might be like, speed the fuck up! And other times you might be like, slow down! But, like, there's a perfect medium, and I feel like Their Gotham is one of those bands that just absolutely nail what Funeral Doom is all about. And when it comes to current times, Worm do the same exact thing with Gloom Lord. Disembowelment with Transcendence into the Peripheral. And even with their demo material, I always liked Disembowelment's old logo. But, like, don't get me wrong, I, I love, like, the lowercase d and stuff. Like, it's sick. And also, when it comes to 2020 Funeral Doom, Worm Gloom Lord versus Atramantius Stiglin. Or Stiglin. Fuck my life, right? But I'm a big fucking Worm fan. Flardidian Funeral Doom. And that's what we are currently blasting. Great stuff here by two of my favorite Flardidians. From Miami, Florida. Down in the fucking swamps. Along with John Randall and Dennis. Awesome, awesome people from Florida. That's four sick fucking people I know from Florida. <laughs> so, if you, you know, you're new to the genre, I suggest starting with something like Gloom Lord. It's just very, very easy to get into, and it has everything you could want from a Funeral Doom album. And the same goes for Atramentius. Like, this is something that doesn't come around so often, and... Sometimes you need to just pay attention to the underground. And again, I can lead you to water, but I can't force you to drink. In my opinion, these releases are what's worth checking out when it comes to Funeral Doom. And I'll do a whole separate video on Straight Up Death Doom. But this is mostly Funeral Doom shit, so... Thank you, Phantom Slaughter, for making this video possible. Because this influenced me... To just talk about Funeral Doom and stuff for those of you that might be like, what is this Funeral Doom stuff that this dude's always talking about? So, as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Hoose.